All right, Big Bang, welcome to the Mid Show. It's Eddie, it's White Sox Dave, it's Chief Danny at the baby table. Uh, the Mid Show is presented by Miller Light. Uh, big show today, guys. We got Lance Lynn, Lucas Giolito. We're going to talk Cubs opening day. Uh, we got a lot of other stuff to get to. March Madness, mm-hmm. obviously, Final Four weekend. Uh, before we get into it, though, we do want to talk about our presenting sponsor, like I said, Miller Light. Because when you're in the mood for a light beer, you don't want a beer that's light on taste, right? Miller Lite is brewed for people who want their light beer to taste like beer. And with just 96 calories and 3.2 carbs per 12-ounce servings, uh, Miller Lite has more of the flavor you want and less of the stuff you don't. Miller Lite knows that beer lovers want their light beer to taste like beer. That's why they brew a light beer that's light on calories and not on taste. Because what's the point of having a beer if you can't taste it? Uh, I mean... Opening day. Opening day. I mean, this is this is the rare time. I always make brats and hot dogs for opening day. Mm-hmm. You're cooking with that beer. You're drinking that beer. It's it's a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. It's it's perfect. And, and Miller Lite is the absolute to me. Like that's opening day beer. Like yeah. crisp, refreshing. It still might be on your back deck too. The case in the back deck. This is like the last day for that. So it's great. I can't wait for it. This is. I'm very happy. Guaranteed rate is back to Miller Lite. It's awesome. Um, so if you're at if you're at the stadium when they have their home opener next mm-hmm. week, make sure you're make sure you're enjoying that Miller Lite. Probably the best signing they've had in a couple of years. Hey, probably that could, that could be debated. <laughs> probably that could be debated. Uh, light beer with the with the uh, flavor you love tastes like Miller Time. To get Miller Lite delivered right to your door because hey, you might want not want to leave your house tomorrow because you're watching baseball wall to wall. Visit MillerLite.com/redline or let's be honest, you could find it pretty much anywhere they sell beer in Chicago. Or around the U.S. Celebrate responsibly. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. 96 calories and 3.2 carbs per 12 ounces. All right. We're going to rip off the show. We got kind of an angry room. Everybody's on edge. Even though everyone's happy that it's opening day. White Sox Dave legitimately has 162 uh, days to earmark something to do. Mm -hmm. That's that's huge. Yes. That's big for him. I mean, he just literally thanked the Northwestern basketball team for saving his winter. (laughs) For 30 Earmark days, yeah. Yeah, so you'd Whatever think it'd it be a happy day, but it's an angry day for I don't know. Everyone's on like what what, what happened <clears> in the car? You said Dave was a little fired up. I was fired up today. Yeah, everyone's fired up. We're we're driving, and Dave, you know, he I feel like, and we're all just kind of like I don't know. I'm still I'm back to like the whole not sleeping thing, so I'm a little bit on edge. And we're driving up uh, to my place, and there's this guy who's just kind of crossing the street, pedestrian. You know, no no, uh, it was just at a stop sign. Just no hustle. Just absolute no hustle. Give me some heart. And Dave is just like, <laughs> this is fucking bullshit. At least fake a quick little like uh, foot shuffle and like get going. And like he's like, this guy. And he's like, look at this guy. Like he had a kind of a douchebag haircut. And Dave just hated his guts because the guy took him probably eight seconds to cross the street instead of what probably should have been closer to five. Here, here's my thing. If I'm stopped at a, at a crosswalk and a stop sign and – you're on the sidewalk and we make eye contact to decide who's going to go. And I give you the head nod and you give me the wave. Give the half ass shuffle across the street to get through because I was the courteous one to give you the right away. You're the courteous I, one who didn't run him over. Exactly. Yeah. And it was just give the little foot shuffle, even if you're not making up extra ground that you would be walking, like just fake it. I don't disagree with this at all. I think you could walk leisurely if it's at a red light. Yeah, just right. You know, yeah. Give you a little have, scoop. If you what about have, a stop sign? Was it at a stop this sign? This is at a stop sign. sign. Oh, it was. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. if you're if you're at a light and there, it's like you have your whatever twenty seconds, and the clock's ticking, and that's so it's different. You're on your own. If it's at a stop sign, and you you better be moving your feet. You better be treating show that. some hustle. Yeah, treat, you agree with this? Treat Dan? that Play like winning it's a, baseball. Like Ten yard shuttle. I've had a strong take about this for a while. I don't think pedestrians ever deserve the right of way. A car is like a weapon, basically. I have a two-ton vehicle. Oh, so you want to ban and, cars? What's up? No, I want to ban pedestrians thinking that they could just walk in front of the cars and not being afraid of cars anymore. I mean, that, that is kind of banned. It's called jaywalking. No, like even if we're at a crosswalk, a car should still be able to go first. You're saying like a busy downtown intersection where someone's trying to turn right or left and you just can't because it's just yeah, an because, onslaught of people. Or people, even like college kids, how the whole joke is they want to get hit by a bus. So they just like walk across the street, get hit by a bus. Living then. on a college campus is an awful thing. Sure. I will say that for this reason, because college kids are douchebags in general. And then you add in, they just disobey 
any societal rule that says you should scoot when crossing the street. Well, ever since we got the crosswalks where it's like you you need to always stop at a crosswalk, whether there's a stop sign or a light, pedestrians, they don't even look both ways. Like, oh, there's a crosswalk, even though it's across a busy street. I'm you just going to leisurely walk in there. They need to be more afraid pedestrians. I've thought, I've thought about that recently. And, you know, people wanting to get hit by a bus. Uh, hold on, hold on. I One almost second. got hit like two wait, weeks ago, by, by the way. By a bus? No, by a car. By One a, sec. You said you got to stop if you're in a car at a at a crosswalk even if there's no stop sign now correct yeah. oh yeah yeah why yeah. wouldn't they have a stop sign there that's like dangerous no it doesn't matter you if you pass a crosswalk and there's someone standing there ready to cross the street you get a ticket mm -hmm. if you don't stop for them i think there's a, a, i think there's a spot like that on um, there's a couple on chicago avenue on, I know. on belmont and that's, like belmont and kenmore i feel like that's where that chief it's any crosswalk yeah it's not just the ones where they got those like the white those little floppy yeah the white yeah, things yeah. are like the floppy like little person walking with a little stop sign they're like yellow things in the mm -hmm. middle of the street yeah, like the it's the any crosswalk famous beetle i feel like crosswalk. If, if if you yes. yeah, yeah yeah there's yeah. an example each beetle would have got plowed by a car yes but they but they you're supposed to stop and let hmm. them go um i feel like that's ridiculous that's what i'm saying you it, there should be a stop sign there if there's no stop to, sign did yeah. you I'm, I'm even talking about like kids just or not, i shouldn't say kids <laughs> men just like crossing the street i don't know a side street uh and they it's more like no one is afraid to get hit by a car that's my thing we need to be more afraid of cars you know well, both ways i agree i very much agree with that because you drive you don't like being in the position of a driver you sometimes are like whoa like you don't sometimes you don't see shit and it's like if if someone just randomly walks <laughs> no <laughs> fuck you it, I I didn't fuck it was, you it's called a blind spot no. i, sh I should have led with if someone just frolics in the middle of a busy street and you hit them it's still your fault uh, well, you brought up the beatles abbey road i think that yeah. was mm -hmm. uh did you know there's a 24 7 live feed of that intersection let's pull it up seems yeah. necessary yeah you could pull it up it's actually kind of interesting it's it's funny too because well, it's a super busy spot of town and people are just Taking pictures, Instagram like, photo, yes, them, yeah, them like, and three of their friends. It's got to be chaos. If you could find that, pull that up. Number two, yeah, there it is. See, it's just a live feed of Abbey Road crossing, and now it's obviously night. What time is it there? They're six hours ahead. Yeah, yeah. So it's 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 pretty dead. But I'm sure you know who know. Maybe some people were rolling up soon. Do you know that their daylight? They have daylight savings too, but it's not the same day as ours. So there's like a couple weekends where they're like seven hours ahead, and then oh, they switch really? back. Well, everybody needs to get on the same I page. I think I think we're done with it. I don't know, right? Mm -hmm. For six months. No, I think it's done. Oh, did that good. law pass? I'm pretty sure, right? I don't I, know if that went through. I thought I heard this last time change was the last time we changed times. Do you think this guy even knows he just walked across Abbey Road? Yeah, well, yeah, but. He's probably lives probably there. lives there. He probably crosses every day. Yeah. It's like asking if you cross Maybe. Belmont. Yeah. Um, number two. Has this guy ever heard of the Beatles? You think? I was thinking you don't want to get hit Maybe. by a bus. Correct. You prefer not to get hit by a bus. Yeah, like, but remember everyone like, oh, I'll take like the eighteen million dollars. No. On this note, you don't want to do that. I know that sounds. Well, stupid no it doesn't i no, of course not half that money is going to go to fixing your collarbone and like <laughs> it i don't know it just can't be said chronic pain is just not fun uh, did it's you know the worst. stephen king got hit by a car he got hit by a van jogging in maine and his, That's why I don't jog. his life was excruciating like his he couldn't sit and write he couldn't he couldn't find a comfortable position he later bought that van back and just so he could beat the fuck out of it all the time it's from the from yeah. the it's actually pretty yeah. good coping it's pretty awesome mindset. right yeah number three the pedestrians if it's poor weather they should have the right away sometimes i feel bad when i go and someone's getting poured on or it's cold as shit out you know well you're driving in the rain even more likely to get in yeah accident. but yeah that i mean the whole if if it's raining out or like sub-zero temperature you should be scooting a little bit anyways do you think that that it's like a karma thing for you with the scoot because you take the right of way from cars uh -huh. that so they're like mm -hmm. the universe is getting you back by making these guys walk slow in front of your car? No, this has been something since before I started stealing right of ways. Okay. But and and on the note of stealing right of ways, the biggest cunts in the city of Chicago are, are Metro drivers. Uh or CTA drivers rather. On oh. the buses. They have no fear of merging into traffic and just shoving other cars off the road i so remember, it's like an, an unbelievable confidence they have when i lived remember when i lived in chicago and hoyan mm -hmm. basically there was one of these old um i don't know what they're called they're like i would refer to them as like a hippie van like a volkswagen yeah, yeah. van 
and it was in like mint condition. Like it looked pretty nice. And like someone had taken the time to fix it up. They used to park in mm-hmm. front of that brothers and sisters or yeah, whatever yeah. that place is. This bus just comes through. There's a bus stop like right at that corner. Comes through, absolutely fucking smokes the side of it, scratches up the side of it, and takes off the mirror as if it was your mirror, and then just kept on driving like nothing That's happened. That's what they do. They're yeah. the biggest. They're the worst people in this entire city. Yeah, I hate those guys. I'd Every like to, last one of them. I'd like to retract. King's lawyers purchased uh, the van for fifteen hundred dollars to prevent it from appearing on eBay. The van was later crushed at a junkyard, and King was disappointed because he fantasized smashing it. So. Oh, look, that's just I mean, that's, looks painful. That's right there. 1983, right there. That van. Yeah, dude, he like got super depressed and stuff. It was. It's kind of. I mean, a, look it, at his posture. I'm like in pain just watching this picture right that now. Big fucking thing on his leg. Yeah, it's a sad story. Uh, so you don't want to get hit by a bus. That nope. was my only thing. Hey, let's take a quick break here because we got to talk about ChevyDriveChicago.com. Uh, you guys saw all your favorite Chevys last month at the auto show. Now it's time to drive a new Chevy home. Can't wait. Yeah. Well, you you have a, a model that you like best. I, I, I'm i partial to the Blazer. It's yeah. such a classic name, a classic Chevy brand. Mm-hmm. So I do like the Blazer. Um, I really like the Equinox. Okay. And the Traverse is nice, too. The yep. Traverse is really, really nice. It's got those captain chairs. Ooh, I like, like that. Like a captain that's a nice, chair. That's yep. a nice thing there. Um, they also got the Trax, uh, obviously the Silverado. ChevyDriveChicago.com makes it easy for you to shop the showroom and see every detail on every model. You can build... Your, uh, you could build and price your dream ride as well and find your local dealer with a simple click. Shop, click, and drive at ChevyDriveChicago.com today. It's that easy. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 that time of year. They also have the great maintenance, too. So if you go to ChevyDriveChicago.com, just plug in your zip code. You find all the dealerships near you. So while you're in there, check something out. I kind of want to be a truck guy. I feel like I'm starting to every. You know, I wish I could. I'm I'm leaning. I'm so leaning bad. that way. I am I love leaning it. that way. I love so it. we're. I think it's at the end of the summer, right before we get the new office. I'm I'm holding out until then, and uh, I'm I'm leaning truck. I've already decided. I mean, assuming I'm living downtown Chicago, because I can't be a truck guy. Unfortunately, downtown as much as I would love to be, but. My next car will be an Impala, brand new, fully loaded. I think you can be. I think you can be. I would love to see you. You could be. Yeah. Hey, if you want to visualize, I have a little parking in the back. There's yeah. a guy who had the parking spot moved out, so that's why I'm leaning towards truck. There you go. Get it. Yep. Uh, ChevyDriveChicago.com. Go do it. All right, let's get back into the episode. In other news, we have a White Sox Dave Challenge coming out tomorrow. It stems off of double rollies, which Dave, no big deal, right? Totally normal behavior. <laughs> totally normal. I had luggage <laughs> um, to pack. So we are going to have Dave do three combine drills. He's going to run the 40. He's going to do the three-cone drill, and he's going to do the long jump. Without rollies in his hands to get his time. Mm-hmm. And then that's we're going to set. control group. Yeah. Yeah. That's a control group. And then he's going to do it again with double rolly action. So what do you think is a fair amount, Dave, to set? With rollies, like an extra 10 seconds. 10 seconds? No, no, no. Like, like, uh, f- no, no. No, that's too long. Sorry, sorry. I was going to say. I have not. Uh, uh, so I've never sprinted for 40. You've never, yeah. had to, you, you've never had to sprint through an airport to make a flight? Not sprint. I like the idea of you going. Like I think I said style. this yesterday where you're running through on the moving walkway and you're scooting by somebody who's not walking, which which is a whole other discussion. I fucking hate those people. But you just have to pass them on like on your left and you just go like straight arm like this, going around them. Like with one in each hand, one forward, one back, getting skinny. I feel like that's I feel like that's gotta be the strategy. Are you you, I don't know. Will the suitcases be filled? Uh, one no. of them I think has shit in it because we're, we're using my suitcases. I think we're going to put stuff in it from the office. So okay. we'll throw some. Hannah, up. you can hop to it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> chop, chop. <laughs> um, so let's say 40. What do you I, think your normal, what your 40 time is? That day that you beat in the do. What do you think you're running in? I mean, I didn't run half of it. In the run. I don't know, maybe then like six. Six? So if like if you're going if you're going all out, what's your five time? five now maybe? I have I no feel idea. like that's pretty quick. I I mean I don't know. So I would be impressed if you were sub six. What do you think? An extra two seconds with the rollies? I was gonna say if that, but you're saying you can do a forty and five five. I've I've ran it around five in high school. Well yeah, high school. Yeah. yeah. So, so I'm adding a half second. A half seconds like fifteen feet probably, right? Once you're cruising. 
Think about this. If he's going to be carrying two things on his side, he's I, not going to be running regularly. Yeah. We got to find a good number. I say a seven. I feel and like a half. we have to j- base it off of his. You could do. You could do it like the woman in Elaine, uh, or in Seinfeld, where she just walks without moving her arms. You should have to maybe just run your normal forty time with that, and then we'll weigh you down with the bags. I don't know how to, that. How's that a control though? It's probably not. Probably not. <laughs> probably yeah. not. What do you think is fair, Dave? A second and a half. With, I I don't I so, have no idea. Well, we'll have you run it. I have it. no idea. Yeah. It, I mean, full like the both luggage is both. What are I've, they fucking called? The wheelie bags. <laughs> rollies. Double rollies. Duh. Both rollies completely full. That's. I feel like I feel like if you're saying you're gonna run it in five, I feel like we should give you. Honestly, five, you I'm said, thinking because one five. of the bags is way bigger than mine. Yeah. So I'm gonna have to, like I'm not gonna be able to move my arms. So I don't know. I say seven seconds. All right. But we need. I think it's more so a time after. We need to find out what the what, control time is. Yeah. And then say if he runs a five five, then it's like all right, Dave, seven and a half. I feel like you'll also be kind of tired by going through the control group first. I'm fine giving him two and a half seconds, it's or like, maybe two. Two. What about two seconds? I think it's, is two I think seconds it's fair. Two. two at most. Did we get it measured out yet? No. I no, got we it right here. So. All right, so two. Are you fine with two seconds for both running challenges? Sure. Okay. What about with the long jump? I think that. May, I think that's the hardest one. I I don't even know if I'm going to be able to jump with them. <laughs> this is, Wait, he has to jump dude, with the rollies too. I, yeah. All right. Like Mary it. Poppins. <laughs> <laughs> um, a foot. I think it's more than that. More than a foot? Yeah. yeah if, I'm, if I got sixty pounds in one and thirty or two no, feet, you other. gotta be. It's not gonna be sixty pounds. Or, it's gotta whatever. be. You gotta, otherwise, it's too heavy. You have to We're pay just a bag fee. We're just yeah. gonna fill it. We're just gonna fill it. Put some merch in there. But it's, like the the suitcases will very likely still be behind him when he lands. You know. Yeah, but we're judging based off his feet. Yeah, just adding feet. some adding some weights really gonna hurt him there. I think. What can I do a broad jump in right now? Maybe six or seven feet. We, Tom was saying that we did this. You and I did it. Yeah, yeah we still have the, the marks there. Intro. Yeah. Very good point, Hannah. The bags do have to stay on the ground, though. Like, you can't just lift them and run when you run it. Oh, you know oh I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. Why not? For the run. <laughs> well, that, <laughs> that's the, well, then why have wheels? Yeah, why yeah. have rollies? That's not if a, I was sprinting through the airport, I would have the handles down, and I would grip it by, like, the... Yeah, but if you didn't do that, then like what we would have just grabbed Kevin McAllister's dad's briefcase. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. You would have been double briefcase. Yeah, this is the double roll. Uh, double double duffel. <laughs> you asked how I would sprint through an airport. That's how I would sprint through an airport. I would like be holding them up like this, like doing like I mean, you upright can, you rows. Can run basically, it, you can run it three times if you want. I'm just saying. I don't think. That's, I think Rolly's got to stay on the ground. Is that, like for the sake of the challenge. I feel like you can do one of each. Control, arms up. And then wheels on the ground. Uh, I don't know, dude. Rolly, it's a rolly challenge. You can't do the rolly <laughs> challenge without the rolls. Got to roll. Got to roll. I'd be Chief interested. Roll. I'd be interested to see if he could beat his rolly time with the way he wants see, to no, run. See, no, 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 no. In that case, it's going to be like five extra seconds. You think so? Yeah, because I was talking about just sprinting while I'm carrying it like in air. Both. Yeah, then that's just a shot. briefcase carry workout or whatever then, I want, it's, then two yeah, seconds is nowhere near enough all right so oh. what do you think i don't know i think you could I still do, do your two. 40 within two, two yeah extra seconds mm-hmm. i I, do. I don't think that's possible i don't think it's remotely po- possible why what do you think is going to happen one of the rollies is going to like catch on to something and stop maybe you? that's possible well that's that's the risk you have you two rollies We're trying to uh, yeah, yeah. Case he needs more than two seconds he does so what? So now what? We just think about it. Like, what if half? they enclose on his thing? He doesn't want to trip. Like, he's going to be kind of mindful. But you'll <laughs> yeah, I'm not falling in this. If I think I'm about to, then I I'll fail. give. What about three flight. seconds? I think three is a good amount. He's doing a I forty don't... from what? He's just doing a forty, right? Yeah, yeah. but bro, think about it. If you're but running like we, with we'll, things we'll, behind we will, you, we will see the path. Like, they won't get stuck on anything. But you also alley. like you you push them more than you pull them too. I know. Your choice. So, like, I'd be out here, like, pushing them. Oh, I don't think so. No, no, That's I'm how thinking I, they're at your side. You're right, dragging yeah. them. Yeah, you're no, dragging you, them. No, you're not. Your arms are like this. They're facing outwards, <laughs> not frontwards. So I'm stupid. not pulling them. Yeah, I think so, too. <laughs> I, I actually I am so more. I'm I, talking about how. I think the three-cone shuttle is going to be the funniest-looking one. 
you're like, what? Where's my gate? Where's my bait? Back and forth, changing yeah. directions with the wheelies. All right, so will I agree? Will amend now that you know that their wheels, Rolly's got to be on the ground. Uh, wheels down. Is three is three fine? You keep. You just said we're going to amend once the wheels are down. No, well. I amended you because you didn't realize that you can't have wheels on the ground. Wheels will be on the ground, Dave. So, so yeah. So if we want to do that, then we run and then go from there. Yeah. Maybe so let's say work. he let's say he he said five five without any, um, with with no bags. So I feel like in my head the line now after talking about it should be nine with bags. But you're, you're not understanding me. I'm saying we, we just add on whatever seconds is to whatever his control time is. Yeah. That's right. what I'm saying. Right. But you got to figure, like, I got to see the weight of the bags and obviously right, so, the right, shape, well, listen, how they roll. Right, watch the video and we will set the line in the video. <laughs> yeah, right, for far too long. Yes, yeah. this, this has. Far too long. So go do that. I could have just talked about that forever. Where are you going? To go do this, aren't we going to do this? We got more things to talk about before we do. We gotta, we gotta oh. kind of finish this show. I thought we were uh, doing a cutaway like the race. Oh no, 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 no! I, I like that though. However, um, let's do a couple sports things before we get into uh, Giolito and Lynn. Uh, first thing I'd like to get into is March Madness. We had an absolutely chaotic weekend trying to watch this. Our Airbnb was the most beautiful place ever. Yeah, but it didn't have TV. And. My beef with that was that the, in the instructions, they're like, you have YouTube TV or whatever it was. And then it's like, if you log in. If you subscribe. Like have, yeah, if they have the app. But we could have just I downloaded the app that. anyways. Um, sorry, I was reading a text from Rico and Robbie. Um, yeah, Dude, that, sure. you can't do that. You yeah. can't do that. That's it's it's false advertising. You, you can't get your money back. You can't be like, yeah, we have YouTube, and then you have no logins. That's where I had a text poor Lance who was at France's comedy show, asking if he had a YouTube TV because it just seemed like a Lance thing to have. Um, Did you have it? That is true. No, he didn't. Hmm. He, he goes, "Is that subscription? If so, I do not." <laughs> Thanks, Lance. Enjoy your weekend. <laughs> yeah, I knew. I was like, oh, I could be really clutch here, but I'm not. So that's tough. <laughs> Um, ridiculous. So whatever. We tried our best to watch everything. Um, any thoughts about the final four? I'm done watching. Why? Uh, really? You are I got no rooting interest. Basketballed in out. Yeah. It's baseball season. I mean, I'll obviously watch it, but like, I'm not like, Do I was looking forward to that. Obviously Northwestern is playing, but I was looking forward to those. For, I had the time of my life watching those games. I didn't gamble on any of them. It's nice. <laughs> I'm pulling a Rovell right now. The time of my life, I just pictured. It was awesome. I had two TVs going. The surround it. sound in home theater was booming. <laughs> mm -hmm. That basketball was just every time it would, the bass would go off. I shake the I, house. I obviously have some good skin in the game this weekend. So at halftime of the Indiana game, so this is the second Sorry. round. This is Sunday, not last Sunday, but the Sunday before. I put 150 bucks for Miami to win the title at 80 to one. Yeah, pull up that ticket right there on YouTube to potentially win twelve grand. So, so you're gonna break off Dave a little piece? Why would I? <laughs> what what makes you think you're entitled to Miami bet at all? Nothing. I would take out my gambling buddies. No offense to everyone in this room, but guess we're not gambling buddies. Well, I don't know. You guys had Montana. You were the Cowboys. I wasn't in the Cowboy thing. Bobcats. Yeah, Dave also Portnoy put two hundred forty grand at them uh, plus four fifty to win. Did he uh, just empty his account? Zero eight four million. I Where does the nine eleven eleven come in? I don't know. It's a good question. Maybe that's you know they the limit. You try to get your or you try to get your change in there. Whatever's he probably has an even amount left in that account. I would assume, but maybe he did empty it too. So big. Uh, if you're if you're an Ed head out there, if you're following our show, <laughs> I I'm rocking hard for Miami because that would be a nice a nice payday. Um. They're, they're well, big dogs in that game, six points. Wait, who are they playing again? UConn. 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 Which doesn't make sense to me. I one but ounce of UConn basketball this year. They got the big I kid in the middle. no fucking clue how they are. So are you less interested because you don't care because your team's out or because you don't like that the four teams remaining aren't traditional college basketball powers besides UConn? I mean, like I said, I'll watch, but I'm not like looking forward to the Final Four. Okay. It'll be on TV, too, while baseball's on. On this note, I have a comment from Dave from the Arizona trip that just popped in my head. The big story from that weekend in basketball, I feel like was that woman from Iowa who went for 
40, 10, and 10. I don't even think we should do this because no? it's, a, no, it's a bad look for us. I feel like we could we could no. set up a challenge. How, okay, how tall is she? No. No, don't, I'm not doing this. It's a bad look. I don't think so. This I is, think no, I could this tear is, up. This is like beyond entertaining meatballs. <laughs> Dave saying that he could get a get a point on Caitlin. No, Kim. he said that she couldn't score on him. Yeah, nah, not, no, it's, it's, it's just, just no. Bananas. She's fucking amazing. This, I don't want to discredit she her. Is. Anything she's done, that's wrong. She, uh, she's a fucking stud. She, I watched that game. She's Steph Curry. Rental. I know. She shoots it's, it from the no, logo. I, I, I can't entertain this. I'm sorry. But this I'm is sorry. the only reason I brought I that not. up I is not. like that is that is a look inside why we did the White Sox Correct. Day Challenge. Yes. Well, yeah. Correct, Also, you yeah. kind of sort of agreed on, and that was... No, no I didn't. No, no, you're not listening we, on a lot of things regarding that subject that night. Bad luck for the show. I'll leave it at that. It pays to be at the baby table for times like <laughs> Yeah, like, I'm like, I'm, to the viewers, I apologize. This is like the people who did that survey, and I think it was like... 20% of men thought they could return a serve from Serena Williams. That's no, you fucking bananas. Can't. That's, That's no, you a million times different. Yes. Um, I'd be whatever. happy to get a racket on a tennis ball yeah. in that case. On that note, we could move I, it. We can't talk about this. I, I So last week I uh, sent out a, a tweet on like Thursday maybe. I am working on boxing Pearl Gonzalez right now who is a professional boxer. Um, she's five. This was her idea, by the way. Um, her and she, I have kind of she boxer or MMA. She's she's former UFC. Now she's uh pro boxer okay. and bare knuckle boxing in two different leagues. Um, we are going to try to make it happen this week. Contractually, she couldn't do it because her fight's on Saturday. And if she broke her hand on my thick skull while she's knocking me out, that's obviously she's out of money and breach of contract, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So we are working on it. Hopefully, it's next week after her fight um but yeah she's gonna piece me up carve me up she will piece you up just like yep. galen clark would um i'm excited for that that'll be fun good uh good little teaser there, david pearl gonzalez yeah White i had Sox like a 10 minute challenge. phone call with her it's funny because like i've met probably five ufc fighters mm -hmm. oh actually more than that with patty and molly they're all like the coolest people on earth and they're sweethearts every yeah. last one of them and they're just killing machines when they if they flip that switch. You don't so want the smoke from Juliana Pena. Uh, I she I'm afraid of her. <laughs> uh, like I am afraid of her. She's come in here before, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Fair. Um, besides that, March Madness and everything, we could slowly roll into our interviews that we have on today's show. Uh, before that, though, Dave, I mean, I, we we got to get your perspective on the Sox. Like, you're buckling in, dude. Like, this is where we kind of lose you for mm -hmm. a couple months, and you are in your own world. And it's like, hey, what are we doing this Until at this time? Until there's like, a consul. Yeah. yeah. We got, and then I kind of just check out and go to football. But yeah. it is, like, it is one of your this favorite things. This is the to weirdest. Just, like, check Dave's Twitter during White Sox games. Love it. <laughs> Could so not God, love it fucking out of, it. out of context, anger tweets are just. The. the I wasn't really looking forward to the start of spring training this year because of how much the White Sox have pissed me off. The World Baseball Classic completely flipped that because it was awesome. I'm like, I'm ready for baseball to start. After talking to uh, uh, Giolito, Lynn, and, and Joe Kelly, uh, Joe Kelly airs sometime in the next couple of weeks, I'm reinvigorated. I'm ready to go. It's still cautious optimism from me. Um, I'm not going to make some grandiose predictions saying, oh, this team is going to win the division, win the World Series, anything like that. I'm going to say they should win the division. If they get to the playoffs, it's any, you know, it's whoever's the hottest at the time, typically. And um, I'm excited. We'll see. It's it's the first month is just, whew, it's tough. That's a tough fucking, if, they, if they're 500 at the end of April, I'll be completely content with that. They got all the best teams in baseball in the first month. So we'll, we'll find out. But the talent's there. I don't know if the depth is. Um, the drive seems to be like Tim Anderson. It's uh, it's all talk is cheap from all the players, front office, everybody, until they win baseball games. So we'll see. Um, Guardians are favored to win the division. I know. Yeah, uh, eighty eight wins, I think, and then you're, Sox are eighty three and a half. I want to say you're more optimistic than I thought you would be. Yeah, it's it's cautious. I mean, the talent is there. For Whether sure. or not they play winning baseball, that remains to be seen. Obviously, Griffel is. Um, I mean, we'll see if, if, I, if I his like, message is received. I like some of the things that Lynn and Giolito told us about him. 
Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. I, I oh, like yeah. some of that. You guys will hear that. Now, what's your hook here? Like, how long are you? And this is subject to change. Yeah. I don't want to hold you to this, but hmm. leading in right now on March 29th. So by May 1st, I think it's uh, it's 33 games they'll play mm-hmm. by May 1st. Um, if they're 15 and 18 or so, that's fine. But if they're like 13 and 22 or whatever the math adds up to, then we're starting to worry. Okay. Then we're starting to worry. But 500-ish is fine if they're above 500 fucking outstanding because then the – you know, the the lesser part of the schedule starts to kick in for the next few months. But the first first 35 games or whatever, they're tough. They're really tough. And starting four with four tomorrow with Houston, thank fucking God that little runt Jose Altuve got hurt. No, I don't like that. I'd rather beat him at full speed. Fuck that. But cautious optimism. That's the name. That's how I'm approaching this season. What about injury-wise? So far, so good. Okay. Uh, what do you like? Are two guys go down. You're like, oh my god. This oh is... yeah, it's their depth is pretty much non-existent. They okay. can't have injuries this year. They okay. can maybe weather the storm with one major injury, not two or more. Okay. Cautious optimism. Do you expect the White Sox to win the division? Though, be honest. Yeah, going to. I would bet them to win the division. Okay. All right. And it's out now. We heard on Saturday that um, Liam Hendricks may is gunning for a May, mid-May return. Mm-hmm. And I didn't say anything publicly because I didn't know if he wanted us to consider what he's dealing with or if the organization didn't want us to or any like of the players said that if they want us to. So I but it's kind of out there now. Han said they're not putting him on the DL to start the year. Um, By all accounts, he's working his dick off on the field still, which shows you what kind of animal he is just mentally on top of, uh, you know, being in the middle of radiation therapy, which is I can't even imagine what he's going through. So um, that'll be great. And then Crochet is going to be back in like a month, six weeks, too. So that bullpen on paper should be lights the fuck out. Mm-hmm. So that'll be a, that'll be an absolute strength, I'm hoping. Um, and especially with how with like pitchers don't throw 150. Like it used to be 200 innings is awesome. Yeah. Now it's gone to like, oh, let's get them through 150 innings. So you're going to need that awesome pen. Mm-hmm. But it's uh, I'm excited. Tomorrow's opening day. Gio gonna bounce back. Gio's gonna. He's gonna. He's an easy bounce back candidate. He Bro, looks. He looks slim. so fucking good. Yeah. Yeah. He looked good. So he told us, and you'll hear this in the interview. He came into camp last year at 280, and he's six six. He's a you know tall dude. Yeah. And he's got the frame that can hold 280, but uh, now he's walking around 245, um, down 35 pounds, and ready to be that 2019-2021 Gio. So. All right. Yeah. He looked good. See opening day. Uh, no, he is the game three starter okay. on, what would that be, Sunday, Saturday, whatever it is. Okay. Um, all right then, Dave. I guess we can get to the two-star players unless you have anything else to say before a uh, pitch is thrown. Nope. That's it. All right, White Sox, Dave. Uh, I will see everybody Monday on lap B. Cool. Overly, ca- not even cautious, cautiously optimistic, but expected to win, so... I wouldn't say you're that cautious because you do have But on paper, they have the best talent. That, Correct. That's just the truth. That's Correct. objective. That's not me being a homer. Correct. Well, all right, then. We could get into Lance Lynn. We'll roll him first because that's the order of which we did them in. Uh, before we talk about Lance Lynn, though, we do want you guys to know that game time is here for you for any of your ticket needs for Major League Baseball season or concerts or whatever because game time is the exclusive ticketing partner of Barstool Sports. It's a ticketing app that makes it easier than ever to score last-minute deals on tickets to sports, concerts, and shows, and they guarantee the lowest price. They crack the code on how to score last-minute deals on tickets. And, uh, I mean, Dave, you it, – it's so quick and easy. You're not even doing season tickets anymore, right? You're nope. just going through game time? Game time every single – every every game. That's great. Mm-hmm. And I'm saving money on it. I could, I'd be paying more if I got season tickets. Yeah, it, it is. And it's like I am exclusively like a last-minute baseball guy. Like mm-hmm. if, I, if I'm walking the dog and I live – you know, near Wrigley. If I'm walking the dog and it's like a nice night at 6:30, I'll just fire up game time and just pull the trigger on some tickets. It's the best. Yeah, great, great stuff. The purchase process so quick and easy. Once you buy your tickets, they're delivered directly to your phone. No printer needed. The app also allows you to easily share tickets with friends via text, so you can get into games seamlessly. Download the Game Time app. Go to the website. Enter your email and redeem code mid for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms do apply. 
Luke Combs also in concert too. I might uh might I'm go going check to that see out. Tedeschi Truck Saturday with them. Oh, there you go. There you go. Game time. Go check it out. And uh, yeah, without further ado, here is White Sox starting pitcher Lance Lynn. All right, so we are now in the interview portion of the show. Uh, it's myself and White Sox Dave. And uh, we are joined by Lance Lynn from a uh, White Sox spring training broom closet, so to speak. <laughs> right? I mean, that's what it feels like. Oh, uh, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if it doubles as a broom closet when we're out of here. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's also like, have you ever seen Step Brothers? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It feels like we're the two jackasses ready to yeah, but have an interview. Who's the guy behind you? In the yeah. Suit? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we're not going to tear ass on you, I promise you. It's no, too small of a room for that. <laughs> He um, would knock you out too. Yeah, exactly. um, but thanks for doing this, man. No, We're excited to be. talk to you. Yeah. So did you see that? All right, we'll start here. Did you see the meme that went like kind of viral? And I hate that word because it's a little, it's too millennially for me, but uh, about how you look like White Sox fans. Uh, I, you know, I don't have any social media or anything like that. Most people are like, Hey, here's, here's what people are saying. And it's like that. So yeah, someone was like, man, this guy just screams. Uh, one of my buddies was like, everyone loves you on the South side. They scream like you're a fan in the stands. So do you, like, Perfect. That's exactly what it is. That's why <laughs> once you got here, obviously you dominated your first year here and it's just like, you're one of us, you know, big dude. Don't do a ton of ab workouts. I'm imagining <laughs> like to drink your domestic shitty mm -hmm. cheap beer. Um, so I don't know. It was just right off the bat. It was it was I'm like this is our guy. But um, I'm a little offended though that you thought he knew he went viral because there, I was you seen, I knew, you no. scream no social media. Mm -hmm. guy. Well, yeah. I knew it would have gotten back to him, but yeah. like someone yeah, would have yeah. had to show him. Yeah, my, you know? my buddies always like to send me like, "Hey, oh, you did this," mm -hmm. and everyone's talking about it. So I was like, "I don't really know. I just What's, pitch." What's the reason for that? Are you you just don't like the uh, you know to be active on there? To, you know, is it too much going on? Or you just I have no desire to yeah it's, it's care all about assholes, what other people are doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I go, I got kids see. and all that. I do my own thing and you know whatever whatever it is. Respect. <laughs> um. So you just got back from the World Baseball Classic. Now, I was just talking to Joe Kelly a few minutes ago. He said that he had the opportunity to play for Team Mexico this mm -hmm. year, and like all of us. He was just enthralled while watching on TV. Did you have to like get talked into playing for Team USA, or is that something you wanted to do? No, it was more. I called DeRosa and was like, "Hey, mm -hmm. I'm in," and he was like, "Perfect, let's go." See you so, later. Yep. Um, yeah, I called him in November, and I was like, "Hey, I'm preparing to go. If you want me, I'm ready. Mm -hmm. um, if somebody backs out, I'm in. Whatever." So, you know, you look at uh, guys that don't want to do it, and you understand it. Yeah, yeah. You understand, you know, where we're at. But like after doing it and being a part of it, it was it's something that I, I'm I'm definitely glad I did. And if I get another opportunity, if you play long enough and get that chance again, I'll be, definitely be able to do it again because mm -hmm. you're ready to go by the time that it gets here. You, especially if you do what you need to do early on in camp or right before camp starts, mid March, you should be pretty much ready to run. Right, you hit the ground running. Yeah, and your pitch count wise and stuff like that, they're they're, they're not overextending. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, I enjoyed it and I had a blast doing it. Yeah. Like I, I remember when the rosters were announced, we, I was like, all right, Mankata's playing. Lance just got off an injury last year, uh, with his knee, um, Robert, you know, and I'm like, I, don't, I, I want these guys ready for, and, but in, afterwards I'm like, I'm so glad those guys played and moving forward. I want every white Sox possible play. Cause that competition, like you don't get that in spring training, you know, it drags, it's boring. It's not, those games don't count. It does drag on. That's for mm -hmm. darn sure. And then like playing in those and, and getting guys, especially, you know, you look at guys that have never had deep playoff runs and stuff like that. And you get a chance to play in that. When a deep playoff run comes, it's going to be like, oh, I've kind of been here before. This isn't right. anything different. So it was crazy. There was some crazy crowds. Uh, fans were into it. I mean, it oh, was yeah. awesome. Is it going to be kind of be weird, though? Because you just played in, you know, the highest competition right there. You're in a championship. Opening day is exciting. Obviously, everyone's back, but then you get really in the the thick of things. It's like the second, third, fourth, fifth day of school. Like you know, you're you're going like ninety, and then you got to kind of like pull back a little bit. Is that is that strange or no. is there no pullback? Last for night was strange trying to pitch in a spring training game. I'm sure that yeah. one was like, okay, hey, you got to get your work in. We gotta we gotta lock it in here, uh, especially after you know giving up a couple hits early. And I was I was like, I got to get to six innings. I got to get the up downs and all that. So that was a strange. You know, obviously opening day is always going to be exciting. Especially Especially where we're opening up this year, um, who we're opening up against. So you're always going to have the games that mean a little bit more or have a little bit more to them during the regular season. And then you got to get through the games that uh, are midweek day games in a place that uh, is hot and you don't really want to be there. Mm -hmm. So that's just the ups and downs of the season. You got to be able to figure out how to get through those days and be productive. 
Now, on that note, um, what have you guys been doing to change the injury shit from the last couple of years? Because uh, honestly, uh, yep. the team goes as far as the, the team's health is, you know. Yeah, every team is based on how your your mm-hmm. your guys are going to be healthy, especially your main guys. Um, you know, we need guys like Tim, Mankata, Louie, Eloy to be healthy. Um, there's no other way to say it. Um, I know that the organization as a whole has taken a step to make sure uh, everybody has everything that they need. Um, you know, it's up to the guys to take care of themselves, yep. the truth of the matter. And then obviously fluke things are going to happen. You know, unfortunately they hit batters, things mm-hmm. of that nature. You know, you see guys in spring are getting hands broken and stuff like that. So when those things happen during the season, there's nothing you can do, but the soft tissue injuries and stuff like that, it's all about, you know, being where you need to be doing what you need to do as a player. And then we have all the resources that you can possibly need to do that. So, you know, hopefully you know, those aren't a, aren't a big issue this year, and then we can stay mm-hmm. healthy as much as we can. Does it feel like there's more of an accountability for that right now to going into this year, like seeing how, you know, the soft tissue, like it's like, hey, guys, we need to kind of be on our shit here, making sure that we're ready and that stuff doesn't happen again? Yeah, I mean, you look at everybody, though, in this game, you have to be accountable to yourself. I mean, if you tear something, especially, you know, ligaments or, or things like that, there's really nothing you can do about it. Um those things are, are going to happen in this game. Yeah, but, gotcha. yeah, and when, you, when you're looking at collisions or HPP, stuff like that, you know, there's just fluke stuff. But things that can be, you know, avoided are taking care of yourself daily, having a routine, uh, being accountable, being a, being a grown-up. You know I mean? You're getting paid to play the game. I need you to be ready to go. And everybody seems to be on board with it. We've got all the things that you would ever need, obviously, because – we're, you know, in a major league clubhouse. So they have everything that you'd ever need. So there's no excuses to not be be prepared, especially physically and mentally. Is that a role you play, or, or what? What kind of what kind of leader would you say you are? Well, we're grown men. You can't make anybody do anything they don't want to do. Yep. That's the unfortunate world you live in. But you also make sure that you, you know, keep try to keep guys accountable as much as you can. Uh, their job is to keep me accountable too. There's gonna be days in the middle of the season where you don't want to do shit. The season gets long. Yeah, that's just the that's truth right, of the matter. Sure. Is. But as a whole, we're it's like you're telling your little brother, hey, like clean it up. And you know, there's just days yeah. that you ha- that has to do that. And then there's days where you're like, hey, if you know this guy's down today, let him have a day. Let him mentally mm-hmm. shut it down, do his thing, and then the next day come back. But it doesn't turn into 48 hours, 72 hours of doing nothing. It's like, hey, you have your 24 hours now. I need you to lock back in for everybody and and yourself. Mm-hmm. Good shit. Um, is, is what's the so you have a long history of Tony Larusa, obviously his second stint with the White Sox, but going back to your time in St. Louis, um. We, I don't want to harp out like hardly at all on last year, but last year sucked. We all know it sucked. It sucked for you guys. It sucked for the fans. It sucked for everybody. But what was the biggest difference going from Tony um, in the second stint to Pedro now? Um, I think when you all said and done, there's a whole different coaching staff. So mm-hmm. there's all different uh, ideas of, of how we want to play the game, how we want to do things. Um, Tony stepped into a, a playoff team that looked like it was ready to go. Oh, yeah. And then injuries and, you know, people not performing. Um, when it's all said and done, players play the game. Yep. So we have to play better. We have to be healthy. We have to be there. We have to, you know, be on the field. And all in all, if we're on the field, that's going to help. Pedro's come in. His staff's done a great job of trying to make sure that we know that. Um, and that's what it's all about in this game is if you're there and you're and you're able to play, then the next thing is to perform. So we just got to get people on the field so they can perform. Now, this is kind of a spin zone I've made in my head. Um, was last year's kind of slap in the face, you know, 500 record. That was the team that was supposed to cruise through the division, you know, Vegas odds. We can talk about all that if you want, but it's, was that like, a, do you, are you guys using that not as motivation, but like, Hey, like we can't just coast. Like we are talented one through 40. I was going to say 26, one through 40. <laughs> And, like, now we got to realize that talent, you know? I think people realize the talent. The problem is when you start saying, hey, look how talented we are, and you don't put the work in, then mm-hmm. you get slapped in the face. Um, but, like you said, we got we got some things that didn't go our way last year physically. Um, but, all in all, if we do what we're capable of, play the game we're, we're capable of, we should have a chance to win the division. We've got some teams in the division that got better, too. Oh, yeah. Um, so, um, we got to play better. Um, and if you don't feel like last year was a slap in the face, then – we got a we got a problem. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, right now everybody's working hard, everybody's doing what we're supposed to because this is the time of year for that. So we just got to make sure during the season we keep people accountable and know what we're there for. So that being said, we got to wait and see, and that's unfortunate thing is how we're going to come out, how we're going to play mm-hmm. when the games really matter. Right now, it's easy to work hard. It's either easy to show you're wanting to be here and you want to play hard and you want to win. But when it gets tough and you get in the middle of the season and you are getting tired and all that, like how are you going to show up? How are you going to be there? 
and I just need you to give you give a hundred percent of whatever you have that day. And we'll find out real thing. quick those first four games, right? Well, yeah, you're playing a team that's. I mean, we're going into a ballpark in a in a situation where I mean, you open up the season, but when it's all said and done, it's four games to start the year, so mm-hmm. you can't panic either. So, um, you know, we got to be prepared. Um, that's, that's not something thing. White Sox fans are good at. Yeah, well, it's <laughs> like if we worry about the first four games and think that's going to be the whole season, you're playing the defending champ. Yeah. So with um, your you former know, captain. Yeah. So mm-hmm. yeah, and you're looking at a you know a squad that you know all in all, I mean, they're the Altuve is not there. You know, they're yep. missing some some pieces, but they also added Oz and guys like that. So we know uh, it's a tough matchup going in there. We just got to be prepared to play play good, clean baseball. Yeah, is is there a certain thing kind of what like what makes you go? Well, um, I hate to lose. I was taught that from the get go. I have a brother that's twelve years older than me. He made sure I lost at everything, and that made me not want to lose ever again. Um, when I in between the lines, when it's you versus me and stuff like that, I'm gonna give it everything I have to win. It doesn't matter how good I feel or how you know anything really. It doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't matter. You got to fucking compete, and that's yeah. the truth of the matter. And if you're not there to compete, then why are you here? Like it, it's competition and 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 especially the emotion that you show on the mound. I think that is contagious. I mean, it the fans feed off it, and I hope that like you you were there for the blackout game the against Houston what, two years ago. Like, I know that like if the team gets rolling right away, like Sox fans come out for the you know for for good teams, and and we want to see you. And I like. I know we can turn that park into like a, a one giant Lancelin strikeout. <laughs> fuck you to the center field camera, you know? So, but um, what, what's your like team goals, personal goals coming up this year? I mean, you're, everybody has something, right? Mm-hmm. Um, personally, I mean, it's all about just staying healthy and make sure you make your starts for the team. Uh, everything else will take care of that. Yep. You know, you'll be able to make your starts. You're there every fifth day. You're accountable. Um, and you're doing what you're supposed to. That's, and then whatever happens number wise is going to happen, but you just got to be, you know, you got to post. That's the truth of the matter. I need to make 30-plus starts, and I need to be healthy. That is, and then if you do that and you pitch well, and then things start rolling from there. And then as a team, you know, it's one step at a time. we got to win the division. You win the division, yep. you win, you get to the playoffs, and then it's one series at a time from there. So first goal is, as a team, win the division. How are we going to do that? How are we going to beat the other teams in the division and, and go from there? You said it's it's a competition thing for you. It's you don't like to fucking lose. You got a twelve, you know, twelve year older sibling. Now, wh- how what how much does it bother you? Like, what bothers you the most? Maybe in a clubhouse when maybe someone's not really that motivated to play a game in May. Like, what what's that like for you? Like, is that does that just drive you nuts? Like, how does this person exist? How are they wired that way? Um, you know, everybody's wired differently, obviously, but they're here because they're talented and they got the ability. So what's your, the next step is how you mentally going to get through when you don't feel like it. Um, there's good days when you don't feel good. So how are you mentally going to be like, Hey, I'm, I got to show up. It's my job. This is what I'm supposed to do. And I got, you know, 25 other guys counting on me. And I think it was one of those things is you just got to, you know, there's guys that you got to get after. And then there's guys you just got to talk to behind the scenes and give them a little different. Everybody's got a different way they tick, right? And I'm not telling you everybody's got to be the same. Like, there's guys that can go through this game without showing any emotion, but they care a lot. But that's just the way it is. When I play, it's like I've got four days of pent up, pissed offness that comes out when I play. The guys that play every day, they can't play like that. There's too many games and too many, there's too much energy put into that to right. be able to show that. So, you got to give them a break, but you also got to know that, hey, I'm here for you, but I'm also going to keep pushing you too. And I'm not, it, it's nothing towards you, but like we got to, everybody's got to keep brothers. pushing. Yep. Everybody's got to push the same direction. Um, And going in, so we were in the last week of spring training. I'm sure you do not want to be here considering what you just played in, but um, looking forward. So what can we, what can we just expect out of the White Sox this year? Well, you're looking at, I mean, from the get go, Pedro's, he's got an opinion on, or, you know, how he wants it to be ran. Like, we're going to play clean baseball. We're going to, we're going to play hard. We're going to get after it. And, you know, obviously we got to, if, you know, no one wants to do that, then I'm sure that that's when they're, that's where we got to go. Yep. So right now it's, hey, we know it's, it's, it's expected of us. We know how we're supposed to play the game, you know, what they want from us. So it's up to us as players to show up, come together and play the game hard. And is there a competition? We got Gio coming in here right after you, but what's the like inner rotation competition like? Um, it's there, but in spring you're 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 trying to make sure everybody's healthy yeah. and everybody's got what they need. And then once the season starts, that's when the jabs start mm-hmm. coming, and that's when uh, you'll start getting uh, 
you know, like, oh, that, you know, night that was a cute six innings. Here's seven. <laughs> stuff yeah, like yeah, that. yeah. Those things come as you go. They got to happen naturally. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm sure there'll be some some side bets on innings pitch, strikeouts, and wins, and all those yeah, good things. Yeah, the vets dinner or something. Oh, yeah. Yep. So uh, all those things kind of come up as you go, especially when you get rolling. And it's our goal as a guy is like starts off with Dylan in game one. Like, hey, we got to set the tone, um, give us everything you got. And then when you kind of pass it on to the next guy and you try to one up the next guy. Mm-hmm. Was there a player in your career that you particularly like competing against on your own team within? Uh, we, I always had a uh, Wayne Wright and I always. I was like his little brother, man. Yeah. And I was like the little brother that was going to do opposite of him just to prove that it can be done another way. <laughs> um, and we always joked about it. And he's like, and, you know, he obviously had a, he's had a great career. So um, when I was in St. Louis, I was with some older guys at the beginning. You know, it was, hey, who was going to get the, who's going to get the most wins, most innings, most strikeouts. And then back then it was who's going to get the most hits at the plate too. So he always <laughs> had that one too. But we always had a, we always had a good time and those guys took care of me and taught me the way. So I'm trying to pass it down. You're obviously not hitting. There's no, there's universal DH. Did you ever hit a dong or no? Nope. Not in a big league nope. game? Nope. I got nope. hits from both sides of the plate. That's about it. I, I saw that. I don't hitter. remember this. Yeah, so I saw he's a I switch hitter. Yeah. left-handed about six years in. Yeah. Because my arm hurt. Just so you because you're after around, Tommy right. John, so I was like, I oh, mean, this hurts to swing, and I started hitting lefty. Dude, so that fucking <laughs> shocks me. You seem like you could just take an axe and hit one out. No, like, it's one of those things where, no. I remember we asked Gio. Actually, we you were here with the interview. We asked him. He's like, Yeah, I was a fucking awesome hitter in high school. He's like, I'm gonna sit in there. It's it's Kyle Hendricks is pitching. He throws like 32 miles yeah. an hour, and he's like, I'm gonna just dip my shoulder and hit one out. And then he's like, He's just. Three pitches in a row, I look stupid. He's spinning yeah. me in the ground. I had Gio as a pitcher only in high school. I'm, I would be very shocked if he had good high school numbers oh, hitting. That's that's what he says. We'll have to ask him <laughs> yeah. soon. Yeah, I was more of a – I could, what I had, like – You went to Brownsburg, four, right? Yeah, I averaged yeah. 14 home runs a year in high school and, and did all that. And it's mm-hmm. it's definitely not easy in the big leagues. No, sure. hitting hitting a baseball is pretty fucking hard. Yeah. But um, I guess we can just wrap up there. But uh, thanks for hopping on. Any uh, final parting words before you head back? Well, not – completely north you guys are going to houston from here but uh before you head back home no i look forward to seeing the fans out um hopefully uh you know we put a better product on the field last year or than last year last year was uh well and it wasn't what it, what it should have been and hopefully we can write the ship this yeah year. And, and we all know it's like this team goes as far as as the team's health goes so um i do want to ask this though so I, we talked about no social media like are you like that uh, are you like a woodsman like people like picture you like are you chopping you know tree logs like on your <laughs> like in the off season? like i'm very curious well, about I mean, your life you get, that's the only way to have a bonfire is to have yeah. wood right yeah yeah so yeah you yeah, gotta I mean, go all the trees that fall down and stuff like that go chop them up and throw I mean, them I'm, bonfire. i'm grabbing that stuff from the front of the gas station nah, that's you know yeah, seven he's a little city little, boy you know, one of those no nah, you can do it all it's all right out back <laughs> yeah trees fall down every did day. you tag out this this fall and winter <laughs> i tagged out bow and shotgun there you go yep i i didn't even get a shot off this year oh I, I, I had a good sit. flicked an arrow in a ground stand and I'm pulling up on just beautiful, beautiful broadside buck ten like good solid ten points. And as I'm going to draw the arrow hit another arrow that was leaning, buck took off. And See it's that. the only it's, it still makes me lose sleep at night. So mm-hmm. but um but thanks for hopping on. Uh let's do it this year. Um I guess enjoy the last few days. It, you're I'm done. You're Wait, done I'm for spring training, so you're just ready to go. Yep. Okay. Um yeah, make sure you give the middle finger after you ring up Pito. <laughs> You got it. Um, so um, that's it. Thanks for having on. Yep. Thanks, thanks, guys. All right. So that was uh, Lance Lynn. Thank you to him for jumping on. Before we get into Lucas Giolito, I think it's a perfect time for a sandwich, mm. a sandwich and ad between these uh, interviews. There you go. You like what I did there? I did. Uh, JP Graziano, you guys know the drill by now. Yeah, it's, it's the absolute best. I was in the West Loop the other night, and it's just like, you know, you're walking around. It's like, oh, my God. It just It's like a little beacon, like calling you home. You see it. Your mouth starts watering. I haven't. I it's hadn't like had one. In a, yeah, I haven't, hadn't had one, and it's 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 been a minute. It's it always, always, always hits. And I know everyone likes to give dogs and brats the uh, the win for baseball season, which obviously a great place. But I think beef has a, a slot at the table too. So go to tastereelchicago.com, grab a beef kit, and uh, oh, make yeah. your homemade Italian. You beef. know what? I mean, that's a lot. That of might be my game. play on 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 Sunday. Do a beef kit and just eat all fucking day. Once it cooks obviously Not this might eat that raw beef and this might be a little wild take i think it's a beef kit is a is a home run for easter too i That's feel true. like you could do that on easter yeah, you have like a, lamb. i mean 
know. Yeah. I don't no want I, I don't want to shit on Lime. I love yeah, Lime. Yeah, I know. But I'm, this is like it's always a crowd pleaser. So if you have people around, it's super easy. You could do it like buffet style if you're having you know, if you're going to your parents' house. You show up with something. I mean, be the guy that shows up with something. Show yeah. up with a show up with a with a beef. Yeah, I like that. I like that. TasteofChicago.com, get your beef kit, get your other assortment of peppers, or go to 901 West Randolph and get yourself a delicious sandwich. Um, they're open Tuesday through Saturday, 11 to 4, and it's the best sandwich of the city from my eyes. So uh, go do it. TasteofChicago.com, JPGraziano.com. And with that said, let's hop into another White Sox starting pitcher, Lucas Giolito. All right, so now we are in the interview portion of the show. We are joined by three-time guests, four-time. Yeah, I don't know. You've been on like a that. bunch. Good Lucas enough. Giolito. Um, we're starting here. What happened with his dog Dog shit first pitch? <laughs> we we got to start there. Dave got nervous. I got man. nervous. I got, <laughs> got the yips. Nervous. I got the yips. Yeah, you, you have to – when you take the ball and you take the mound, you have to have full confidence or you're going to get your shit pushed in. Um, no, he you... wasn't facing a batter. It was one pitch. That is, I will say, you have one pitch. It's that's pretty high pressure. Yes. Um, like if I only had one pitch for all my starts, I'd probably be pretty nervous too. But however, but like a hundred. <laughs> however, here's here's a, here's a kicker here. So we were all in the tailgate beforehand, and everyone's like, "How you doing? You nervous? You nervous?" He played it so cool the whole time. Like, I, you know, I so, didn't get nervous until I saw the people behind you because I was going to just let it rip. You're also a little buzz, too. Yeah, I that, that too. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, you get out there and I think you'll at least empathize with me here. When you get a, a ball hit back to you like a dribbler or a bun or whatever, mm -hmm. I would rather grip and rip to first base th than to lob it. That's yeah. just me. And I think for you as a pitcher, because you're not used to, you know, flipping or you're throwing almost max up. Yeah. So that's my excuse, at least my spin zone on the whole thing, because I'm like, oh, I don't want to hit any little kid behind home plate or grammar or something. And so I'm like, uh, yeah, it I I'm with you on that. It is. It's always been harder for me to throw accurately at like very low effort, usually right. like high effort throws. I'm going to be more accurate mm -hmm. because it's like you're getting your body moving. Um, but I've done first pitches for years with the White Sox and yours was not the worst I've seen. It's, I mean, I played college baseball. I should have at least been able to hit you in the chest. Like, you're sick. What, 6'6", six, 6'7"? Six, six, yeah. And you had to jump for that. They're like, that's yeah. inexcusable. You know, that's inexcusable. <laughs> yeah, it could it could have been better. What's Maybe you'll the, get another chance. <laughs> what's the, uh, what's someone who was worse than him? Do we, is there someone we, we would oh, know? Oh, God. Like Sister Jean or someone? <laughs> no, she she piped it right down the middle. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, um, she she does got a hose, right? Yes. Um Man, I don't I don't remember. Like I like really bad ones are usually I can't think of anyone notable. Like we will do a lot sometimes or it's like they'll do like a sponsor like season ticket or whatever. Like um there's usually only one like celebrity yeah. type per game. Um one of the highlights for me was in you know, he's a tough figure nowadays but Kanye West threw one a few years ago which wasn't too bad he bounced it but it was like still online mm -hmm. and I went I went up to him to give him the ball and he was like oh man that was so bad and I was like no Kanye it wasn't that bad <laughs> yeah. he was like oh they're gonna make it into a meme I'm like no no no, no. It, that's not meme worthy like you're Meme worthy is like fifty cent. Yes. You know that one where it, like right or uh Dude, Steve Aoki out. like yeah. threw it over the um so Carly Ray Jepsen, I think she had a bad one. She had a tough one, yeah. yeah. She like spiked it if I recall. But Gary um, Dalbate from the Howard Stern show. Bye I got Carly. a much deserved internet beating for it, so thanks for being a part of that. But um <laughs> so we just interviewed both uh Lance Lynn and Joe Kelly, and I was talking about this the other day. I I started yapping and running my mouth and I asked you about the World Baseball Classic. Now, Kelly, he's like, I was pissed off that because he could have played for Team Mexico. Mm -hmm. um, Lance, obviously, he's like, I sprinted. I hit up Duros right away. Like, I wanted to do it. Mm -hmm. Like, where were you prior to the tournament and where are you now? Um, prior to the tournament, it was a no for me personally. Um, I didn't get, like, invited by Team USA or anything like that. I know Team Italy has always had interest in me playing mm -hmm. for them. Um, but... Uh, 
the year I had last season, all the work I was doing this off season, um, I already and like this year for me personally, which is, you know, my last year before free agency Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, kind of like what I want to do my part to accomplish with this team in potentially my last year with this team, I was like, no, I want to focus on, um, my development, getting ready and then having a full spring training to get ready for the season. Mm -hmm. Uh, but after watching it, right. When it comes back around in what, three, four years, three years, I think now. 2026 i think they said yeah it's definitely going to be a huge interest right for for me yeah it was electric like like what is the entire thing i've never talked to tim but like you see him like you know fist bumping in the dugout Mm -hmm. and everything and lance is doing like his pet and dick Mm -hmm. grab and all that like it was awesome yes and like i was very anti any white Sox player like they're gonna get hurt they're gonna get hurt they're Mm -hmm. gonna but i really think that the competition like you're not getting that in spring training no it's all you know it's, it's practice yeah, which yes. is necessary, but that you're like running right into the regular season, like yes. ground running, you know? Yeah. Spring training games, like you, you'll get a little bit heightened, a little more adrenaline, but like the more you do it, um, the more it becomes just kind of part of like the routine, part of the process mm-hmm. of getting ready for the season. Like, you know, I've, I had some spring games like, uh, out in Mesa against the Cubs. It was packed house and I kind of got going yeah. a little bit, but I'm throwing like two innings. It was early. Um, and like, we're out there like working on, you know, pitch sequencing and like stuff mm-hmm. we want to do. It's a lot different. Whereas world baseball classic is like playoff environment right. right out of the gate. And it looks so much fun. looks like a lot of fun. So you talked about the year you had last year and then how you needed to really hit it hard this off season. What was the biggest change? Yeah, this you look great by the way. You oh, slimmed down big it, time. Yeah. Really yeah. Just so your ways. the, uh, yeah, the previous off season, um, I bulked up a lot. I got really big. And in my head, I thought it's like, okay, like I have a big frame already. Let me like pack weight on it, pack strength on it. And then I'll be like super strong and stable. Like throughout the whole year, I I won't get hurt. Mm -hmm. Like I'll be throwing hard. Everything will be great. And then that kind of like fell apart. Literally game one, I got hurt. And, um, you know, then later on the season, like it it was just like my body did not carry that weight well. And I was kind of like breaking down. Um, so this off season, the focus really was like, get my body as athletic as possible. Um, you know, I don't, I don't need to be trying to like, uh, you know, reinvent the wheel or anything like that. Like just get to, you know, a very comfortable weight, you know, lean, strong, like flexible, able to repeat mechanics better. Um, and I feel I achieved that pretty well. Uh, spring training has been very productive for me. Um, you know, I feel like I have a lot more of an ability to make quick adjustments. Like, you know, I misfire a few, it's like, okay, cool. Like I can find that release point like that and, and get back in it, which you need to do as a starter. Uh, to be able to go deep in the limited spring training games I've been able to watch because they're hardly ever televised like yeah. once or twice a week in the middle of the day. Um, the changeup looks great. Mm-hmm. Fastball looks like it's popping again. Have you? I haven't seen much slider. How are we looking on that third pitch? That I've been throwing a lot of sliders. It's been good. a lot. Yes. Usage up. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's been it's been very effective. Um, throwing it for strikes a lot, which is huge because mm-hmm. I was for the longest time fastball changeup with a slider, right? No curveball. Now it's fastball change up slider. I can throw all three of those for a strike. And then my curveball is a good weapon for lefties as well. Um, so it's just part of kind of like growing, adapting the longer you're in this league, um, to be able to be successful for an extended period of time. Like you have to adapt and a big thing, for me is having a third pitch that I am confident throwing in the strike zone or strike the ball in any situation. Uh, Cause it used to just be two. Right. Um, and like there, you always flash those sliders. Like one game that really sticks out of my mind is that start you had against Oakland in the, was is that the 2020 year? Yes. Yeah. It was the 2020 yeah, years. Year. It was the first playoff, playoff game, game when you had the mitt thing going. Um, your slider is on. And like, when you have that third pitch, you are the ACE that, you were with 2018-19 through last year. But um, as a team, 
from a team perspective on the whole, what's the, what are the vibes like in the clubhouse? Let's get a vibe check. Very good. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think Pedro, I give credit to him. He's done a wonderful job. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a manager in spring training, um, stressing all the important things, but not like in like generalities, if that's a word, more like very specific to each group, like starting pitchers are a group, relief pitchers are a group, mm-hmm. like infielders group, outfield catchers. And um, being able to build like g- setting goals, like building camaraderie within each of those groups. And then from there, now you can build that good culture and that camaraderie around the entire team. And I feel like, uh, you know, Pedro really set a good standard right in the beginning. Uh, and another big thing that I love that he preaches is instead of like setting these gigantic lofty goals, it's like keeping things more in the present having um like goals set for like a five to seven day period it's like hey starters we want you to do this over the next five Mm -hmm. relievers position players like this is what i want to see over five days and then when that five days is up all right cool like what do we do good what we do bad what what needs to be improved and then we set another and it's like boom 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 like keeping it very present keeping it very focused uh i think it's been just uh amazing so was it going off of that was was accountability kind of lacking a little bit last year yeah i'd say i'd say last year it was it was a mixture of a lot of things like every team deals with injuries we dealt with a lot last year Mm -hmm. and there was like a combination of like a a key guy would go down with an injury and then a bunch of other guys um i was guilty of this would be like putting more pressure on ourselves like oh, okay I really gotta I really gotta step it up I really gotta play well but when you do that something you get a little bit tighter you're not um having as much fun you're not free flowing out there and so there's a good amount of that um you know just like just kind of bad communication between everybody um but I will say I feel that everything we experienced last year, um, it kind of lit a fire under our ass. And, uh, even without all the awesome stuff Pedro has been doing, like us as players have, uh, I've seen a lot of positive changes and I'm looking forward to, um, you know, us like being together, working as a team, um, making improvements throughout the year and hopefully winning a lot of games too. Was it was it hard on you mentally? Because I know we talked about one of the times we interviewed you, and I thought that was fascinating. You do those the, mental yeah, exercises, gonna, yeah. mm-hmm. um, the brainwaves thing. Yes, oh, yeah. and uh, it was super fascinating. W- was it? What was it like for you mentally? Like, did you were you down on yourself at times last year? Oh yeah, I, I'm I'm very I'm very much I've had like a perfectionist type mindset. Like I want to be perfect all the time. I want to like be the best I possibly can be. Um, and in a game that has a lot of failure. Exactly. You know? Exactly. So that will lead me down a, a bad path sometimes to like, you know, being over analytical and uh, like, you know, I'm sitting there in the video room, like what's going on with like, why is my leg doing that? Why am I like unstable on this? Like I got to fix that. Like I got to go do more drills it's like, whoa, you know, that when I get into that mode now, it, I'm not, I'm not really competing against the other team. I'm competing against myself mm-hmm. yeah. for like days at a time. And then I take the ball and competing against myself and I'm facing a bunch of really good big league hitters. Like you're making it harder on yourself. It's so like, it's like the Sandlot. I know it's kids movie and it's not real life, but in the end it is real life it's baseball. Why do you think like stop Mm -hmm. thinking, you know, just go out there and trust yourself. Yeah, exactly. And so, uh, a big thing that was a big takeaway for me personally from last year. And so that was kind of like a driving force into all my work. Just what I really like that a number of pitchers have talked about, um, past and present is if you prepare to the highest, you highest ability like you prepare as well as you possibly can in the off season in spring training in your four days leading up to your start then when you go and take the ball it's all fun Mm -hmm. you just get to be yourself you get to do your thing 
and whatever happens happens but it's like that's the big thing is each time i take the ball i'm pitching to win for our team i'm pitching to go as deep as i can to save our bullpen and that's it like when i walk off the mound whether the results good or bad i want to walk off the mound knowing i gave it my all with everything i had today and i gave it my all with a lot of preparation leading up to this start mm-hmm. like whatever the result is 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 a result it's and somewhat I think it's a much healthier type mindset to have. It's a very um, healthy mindset because I feel like there was a point where you know where you, you it's been kind of peaks and valleys, right? Mm-hmm. Like you, you, oh, definitely, you, yeah. It took you a while to yeah. get there, then you got there, and then once you're there, you're like, all right, this is me now. And then you, a year like last year happens, it kind of. Mm-hmm. But I think it's going to reset you, right? Do you feel that way? Like this yeah. is like a good a good way to kind of overcome everything. Yeah, I mean, sometimes like you got to get smacked in the face to kind of realize, oh shit, what's going yeah, on? Yeah, you got to get punched, right? Yeah, and then um, you know, that happened not only to me, but a lot of guys in this clubhouse and I, you know, looking around, I'm seeing a lot of guys very focused, preparing very very well. So, I'm excited for what's to come. Now, one of those guys isn't in the clubhouse. You're going to be pitching against him in 5 days or whatever, 6 days in Houston. What's that going to be like? What's it actually like right now without Pito in the clubhouse? Mm. Uh, honestly, I think I think we've been fine. Mm-hmm. Like, obviously, we all miss him. Um, he was a huge, huge part of our team, like the heartbeat of our team long before I was here. Oh, you know, yeah. Even. Give the guy a statue. Yeah, he, he sure. deserves one. Um, but, you know, it, baseball is like a business and you know all of us like we understand that mm-hmm. uh the, especially like guys are a little bit older have been around and like we're happy for him like he got a very nice deal he's going to a team that has a long history right. now of winning and and doing very well and so he has a great opportunity there so yeah he um obviously i have the utmost respect mm-hmm. for him he was just wonderful to me and everybody else uh and now he gets to be that guy in Houston, and that's fine. And he's an know? enemy now. Yeah, I mean, on the field. On the field, for sure. On the field, he's an enemy. <laughs> um, have you stepped up in, in his stead, like from a clubhouse leadership perspective? Or is anybody, or is it is that overrated? Like, you're all grown men who really needs, you know, who needs a leader when it's 25 adults, 26. I can speak for pitchers, right? You know, we, all, we are all separate to a certain extent. Um I feel that our leadership on the pitching side is is fantastic mm-hmm. right now. Um, as far as uh, position player side, I feel like some of the guys that will be team leaders weren't here for a lot of spring training. They're competing in the WBC. So I'm just excited to see them take those next steps as mm-hmm. well. And uh, what do you what do you got for us on this year? What do you what, what can you tell white Sox fans to wrap up the interview to get the stink of last year off and say flush last year 2023 is here that's pretty much it like you know last year sucked we know it Mm -hmm. like i know white Sox fans are pissed we Uh, were fucking pissed yeah Yeah. no good yeah no good and no one feels that more than the players like we hated what we were doing you know it was it left an awful taste in our mouth but you know, time moves, time goes on mm-hmm. and we're in a new season now, new opportunity, a lot of new faces. So let's, let's see what happens. Let's have fun with this one. Yeah. I'm excited for it. Um, it's just, I mean, TA, he was roping the ball, the WBC, uh, Eloy was pissing on the ball. I'm excited. Um, I'm, I forgot about last year. So let's hop to it and let's go win a fucking division and win a world series let's do it so i can shove you guys down the entire world's throat how do you feel like when you hear that passion on the other side of the table like, it's, this guy it's true. Like, you know, we i feel like white Sox fans a lot of winning white Sox and this fans, is supposed to be the team it's close white Sox fans have so much passion i respect it um we're yeah, psychopaths i did not and lunatics. i did not grow up a sports fan really like i enjoyed watching sports watching baseball but i was more like honed in on players like players i like pitchers i liked i didn't care about teams winning and you didn't grow up like a dodgers fan or nothing no No. i didn't care so it's like honestly been such an interesting experience like being a white Sox player for all these years and like really feeling that passion from a fan base like the fans care so much they want us to be good they want us to succeed and so, yeah, let's go out and do it. Have you ever heard of a guy named Ken W.O.? 
Yeah. <laughs> what do you think of him? Uh, I mean, you can you can speak freely. I promise. Like, I will. I tell him he's an asshole to his face every day. So if yeah, you want me to, you, you know, you know, you're gonna have people that are really negative. Mm-hmm. It is what it is. That's not. I, I'm not really like that. I'm more of like a glass half full kind of guy when it comes to things. But again, like, I didn't grow up like a crazy passionate fan of one team like in my city right so i don't know like i don't have that it's we're the south side and it's a tight-knit group that's yeah. you know there's not many of us but like a lot of people sink their entire years like disposable income into season tickets and stuff it's yeah you know of it's, course. it's we want wins and yeah, it's life when we man, think I we're get gonna it. get them and not get them it's we get pissed but i i know you guys got it this year the team i don't know it's got this little crisp aura around it right now and everybody looks great thanks for hopping on let's crush it this year go win a Cy Young um Lance says he's gonna outdo you in just about every number this year cool um so you got to make sure that doesn't happen (laughs) what did you guys I didn't ask him but he did say you guys make bets is there like a big category you'd like to I don't think we've done any bets yet no 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 is there like a big category like you know you'd like to get pretty competitive with him on um or he's pitched yeah that's a big one for starters yeah i'd like to it's one of my goals. i don't i'm not really about setting these like giant lofty goals uh anymore for like an entire season again kind of like what pedro was saying to us like that five to Mm -hmm. seven days like boom 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 uh, but I would really like throw 200 plus innings. That'd like, be awesome. I have man. not really. That doesn't gotten, happen anymore either. It's it's hard to do. Some right. guys can do it, um, but that's that's a big one for me. Um, you know, being that type of starting pitcher that goes very very deep, and Lance is one of those guys. I've oh yeah, a lo- lot about that for me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The big bastard. But okay, we'll wrap up there. Things are happening on, and yeah. I'll catch you get a mid season check. All right, appreciate you guys. Thanks, Thank Joe. you. All right, so that was Lucas Giolito. Uh, thank you to him and Lance Lynn for jumping on again uh, to talk some White Sox. And right now, we didn't say this off the top because we were still working through scheduling issues and whatnot, but we told you we were talking Cubs, and we got Dave Kaplan from uh, ESPN 1000. He's joining us uh, to talk some Cubs, Chief. I'm excited. Me too. And, and he's he's a guy who cares. He shows yeah. up every day and does it. So uh, I, I'm happy to have him. He is, to me, like he's one of those names I'll always associate with, with the Cubs. Yep. So – I'm glad we got him on. Same. So, all right, we could just hop right into it now. Uh, here's Dave Kaplan. All right, we are in the third interview portion of the show. We are joined by ESPN 1000's David Kaplan. Uh, Cap, how are you? How are we feeling? It's opening day. Uh, what are the vibes like today on uh, 2023 Chicago Cubs season? You know, and it's great to be with you guys. I'm honored to be on with you. It is exciting because I think for the first time in a while, they're actually trying to compete. Doesn't mean they're going to win the World Series, but we knew going into 20, it's a pandemic year, who knows? We knew going into 21, they're trading these dudes. They're gone. 22, not even trying, which for me is an embarrassment for a team that is as well healed as they are. Finally now, Again, they're not Steve Cohen and the Mets, but they are on this way up. So uh, it's good to see. How would you define success for the Cubs this year then? Because they are, like you said, they're trying to compete. Is there a number? Is there like a style of play you want to see? Or or how would you define it? So, Chief, I've always been the guy who said, if you don't get the ring, you're a failure. You fail. You're a professional freaking athlete. This isn't Little League, and we're hoping the kid makes contact. Did you win or did you lose? And I've come around to the people that say, look, you got to understand, if the Oakland A's go out and win 80 games, they had a hell of a year because they don't have the resources to compete. Uh, If the Cubs go now from whatever they won, 73, I think, if I think they're an 82, 83-win team, and if I see that Nico Horner justified the extension and Dansby Swanson played well and, hey, Cody Bellinger bounced back and Justin Steele took the next step and Hayden Wisniewski, holy cow, Jed Hoyer made a hell of a trade getting him from the New York Yankees for Scott Efros, I can be convinced that that would be somewhat of a level of success. But then if that's where we're at, the next freaking winter, you better be pushing your chips in and going, well, here comes Pete Crow Armstrong, and 
Kevin Alcantara and Brennan Davis. Mm -hmm. I'm not telling you they're going to get Shohei Otani, and I know it's going to be $500 million and all, but you better be playing in the deep F and end of the pool, period. You mentioned a name um, right there that I, someone that I more in passing was watching last year that nobody's really talking about outside Chicago this year, and that name is Justin Steele. I think that guy is going to be by far the best pitcher on this staff. Um, I have kind of resigned. Like, I, I've stopped hating the Cubs as much as I used to because I have to focus all my hatred on the White Sox right now. <laughs> but... I look over at WGN for the 120 game and they're on TV two and stuff. And I see this Justin Steele kid that, like I said, nobody is talking about. I'm like, that's a dude right there. That guy's going to be at, at worst, like a middle rotation quality innings eater. Talk to me about Justin Steele a little bit. I think he's got the makeup to be a really, really good pitcher. Mm -hmm. He's not Max Scherzer. He's not going to blow you away at 99 right here. He can run it up there mid nineties, got a really good breaking ball. And I think he's a hard ass. And I like guys who are, there's a book you guys should read called grit G R I T. And my wife, that's what she does for her job. She's the culture person and all of that at her company. And she took a seminar from the lady who wrote the book grit Angela something. And she found out that Pete Carroll uses this book before they sign a player. He wants to know, what type of grit does Chief have? Like, when tough gets, it's really tough. Is he a front runner? He's only good when things are great? Is, hey, man, I don't care how tough it is. I got grit. That's what Justin Steele has. Justin Steele is a hard ass. And I think he's that guy that if he goes out and gets his ass kicked tomorrow, five days later, he can't wait to get the baseball. There right. are other guys... You get him in a spiral, you ain't getting him back unless you score about 10 runs for him. So I like this kid a lot. Cap, other than Dan's fired up for Steele, that's that's my kind of guy. What about another guy, Co Cody Bellinger? I'm starting to feel like people are like cautiously optimistic about him. Are you going to see it bounce back out of Cody Bellinger? I hope. Look, he won the MVP in 2019. He hit 47 home runs and drove in 100 and whatever. Uh, 2020, I give everybody a pass it was yeah. the pandemic and all the nonsense that went with that horrible time but then his shoulder was injured i mean i hope i hope so he got 17 million dollars and if it works he's gonna get a big contract mm -hmm. if it doesn't he's the guy the pirates are gonna have next year for like five million <laughs> so they're rolling the dice they've got money they're spending it and they're taking a shot He's a really good player. I hear he's a really good dude in the room. So they've put together a really good culture group. I think they have arguably the best defensive team in the National League. The Cardinals are really good, too. But you've got a gold glove winner at short, a gold glove finalist at second, a gold glove winner in center field, gold glove winner, one of your catchers, and Ian Happ is a gold glove winner in left. So you have a chance to pitch and defend your way to a solid season. Do they have enough offense? Remains to be seen. Cap, you now, brought up you brought up well. Hold on, you brought up Bellinger and Dansby. Is there a guy other than those two that you're most excited for? Uh, I'm a I'm really excited to watch what Nico Horner does taking his next step. And then when Saya comes back, they yeah. paid a hundred million dollars for that dude for a yep. reason. Mm -hmm. And he's already in the cage. He's already swinging. So. I think he's coming back sooner than they thought. I, I saw him at camp, and, I mean, this dude is, like, jacked. He looks like he's in amazing shape, but is that oblique going to be a problem? I don't think he's going to get here in the next two weeks because it'd be stupid in this cold weather to put him in that situation because if he hurts it again, what's he out, three months? So I think they're going to be super cautious but I think that guy's a really talented player. Now, you, you brought up um, Cody Bellinger a couple weeks ago, or a couple weeks ago, a couple minutes ago. Say a few weeks into the season, he he really starts to hit a groove. And then come July, the Cubs are flirting with 500. They're playing about what they're expected to be at record-wise. Um, but 
the Cardinals, the odds on favorite are starting to run away at the division a little bit. Trade deadline gets here. What are you doing with Cody Bellinger and other guys? Are you are you taking all those rentals, the guys that probably aren't part of the long term plan, and flipping them, or are you buying and going for it? Well, I mean, it's not like Cody Bellinger's thirty five years old now. Yeah, he's young, so, younger. He's young. Now, yeah. the one thing the Cubs do have in their system, they have some outfielders. They don't have great catching prospects. Miguel Amaya, I've been hearing about since I was nine, and the guy's mm-hmm. hurt every year, so I, I'm not counting on. Him coming through, but they've got Kevin Alcantara and Brennan Davis and Pete Crow Armstrong. Matt Mervis will be your first baseman next year. But there's if Cody Bellinger has a good year, there's room to sign this guy to a contract extension. You got more money than any team in your division by a mile. The Brewers don't spend, the Reds don't spend, the Pirates don't spend, the Cardinals have a really good organization. But even they don't spend at the level you would think they would. So if Cody Bellinger's having a really good year, unless somebody's calling me with such an insane offer that I got to make the deal, sign this son of a gun to a contract extension. Now, on that note as a whole in baseball, as a fan, does it make you sick that – and, and I, I see a lot of Cubs fans bitching about – how the Ricketts haven't opened up the pocketbooks quite yet. And they thought they were going to do it last year. Not really kind of a little bit more. So this year they passed on all those, you know, that stud uh, free agent shortstop class last year or last winter with um, like Trey Turner and Correa was free agent. Obviously he's got his baggage, but whatever. Um, like d- does it piss you off as a fan that they don't use their financial might against these low mark, these small market teams? At times it does, yes. But this year, don't forget, there were four shortstops. They bid on Trey Turner. He was always going east. He made that clear. I want to be east. So he went to Philadelphia. That was kind of predicted from the get-go. You can keep Carlos Correa. He keeps flunking physicals. I I, I don't want to take a chance on giving that dude $300 million and then going, oh, my God, he can't stay healthy? They got Dansby Swanson. They gave him $177 million. The Cubs spent $300 million this offseason. So I don't have a problem with what they spent this year. My problem with the thing is, and I've said this to Jed Hoyer, when you're the Cubs, you should not be going through full-scale teardowns and rebuilds twice in one decade. Nope. Like when Theo rolled in, if he said I'm signing cheap to a contract, I'd have been like, All in, man. You're Theo. You know what you're doing. And it worked, and they won the World Series. Five years later, you got to tear it all the F down again? This better not happen again in the next 10 years. So I'm cool with what they spent this year. I didn't like how we got here. Cap, what do you think of uh, what do you think of Wilson Contreras' comments? And tell me why they're the most brain dead comments a Chicago athlete has made in uh, years. <laughs> I knew I knew we were going to go here. Okay, so full disclosure: I have four sons. My youngest son, Brett, is special needs. Brett loves Wilson Contreras. Wilson and I got sideways because I nicknamed Jose Quintana the Buick. I said, you paid for a freaking brand new Mercedes and you got a 2018 Regal. It'll get you to the grocery store. Nobody's looking and going, who's that dude? No. And that's what we got. And he was as mediocre as they come. I was tweeting something about the Cubs. Hey, coming up on the pregame show on NBC Sports Chicago, uh, whoever our reporter, I think it was Kelly Kroll at the time, sits down with Cubs star at Wilson, whatever, 40. And I click on his Twitter, and it says, you are blocked from following Wilson Contreras. I'm like, (laughs) what? I go right out to Wrigley the next day. I walk in the clubhouse. There's nobody in there except two guys. Brandon Morrow, who's injured for the 90th time, and Wilson sitting at his chair. Everyone else is with Joe Madden in the press room. I walk in. I walk right up to Wilson. He's got his back to me, no shirt on. He's looking at his phone like this. And I go, excuse me, Wilson? Yeah, what what do you want? (laughs) And I said, you blocked me on Twitter? What are we, in high school? And he said, 
Can I swear on this? Oh, yeah, yeah. absolutely. You fucking with my guy's confidence. <laughs> I said, who? He said, Quintana. You call him a fucking Buick, and it's getting to him. I'm like, dude, guy's making $10 million a year. Some goofball on the radio and TV is getting in his head? Wow, that is sad. So we start going back and forth. And I said, Wilson, what is it that you think I do for a living? My job is to A, entertain people, B, be an analyst when I'm doing Cub stuff on TV. And the one thing I will always do is be honest. It's gotten me in trouble. I will be honest. I had Joe Madden tell me, I won the goddamn World Series and you're freaking ripping me on the post game show <laughs> the next year. I'm like, I'm just being honest, man. I'm just me. And I know I'm not everybody's cup of tea. So Wilson and I go back and forth. Finally, he stands up. He goes, I got you, bro. I get it. I get it. We're cool. I said, we're cool? He's like, yeah, hang on a minute. He gets his phone out. You're unblocked. So he calls me. This is summer of 21, the week before the All-Star break. And my phone rings. I don't have his cell phone. I see a number. Yellow. He said, hey, Cap, this is Wilson Contreras. I'm like, I didn't rip you. I didn't rip Katana. He's like, do you have a son and I'm his favorite player? Yep. Is he special needs? Yep. Well, I know where you live, and I'm going to be like five minutes from your house. I didn't make the All-Star game this year. My parents are coming in from Venezuela, and they're going to cook an authentic Venezuelan dinner at my buddy's house. I want to invite you and your son, Brett. But you're not coming as a media guy. Are we clear? Anything that gets talked about there is off the record. You're coming so you can bring your son, Brett. And I said, are you serious? Done deal. Brett, we're going to have dinner with Wilson. We go up there. We walk in. Brett's wearing his City Connect Wilson Contreras jersey. And he walks in, and Wilson's like, You've already got a jersey. Well, I brought you a game used one. And he he signs it. He's got a baseball. He signs that. And then he signs the jersey Brett's wearing. And he had his dog with him, King. And he said, Brett, come with me. I got to take the dog out in the backyard. And I start walking. He's like, you're not invited. It's me and Brett. <laughs> wow. And they go out for 30 minutes. They're playing ball with the dog, hanging out. They come back in and Wilson said, okay, now, Brett, you can ask me anything you want about the team. And this is not for your radio show. I'm like, okay, I get it. Brett's like, why do we stink? <laughs> and it's like, he's got no filter. <laughs> and Wilson's like, that's a great question. And so they get into this whole thing. We're there three hours. He takes pictures with us. And my son, I mean, the jersey's hanging right outside this door here in his bedroom. Contreras, Brett, you know, you're the man, whatever he wrote on it. And then last summer, Wilson's hurt near the end of the year. We went to the Rockies game like September 17th. It's a Saturday. Wilson's on the injured list. He's coming off the field as the game is just ended, and he sees us. We're sitting in really good seats with a buddy of mine who's from Cuba who's really good friends with Wilson. He's like, what are you guys doing here? Uh, Brett wanted to see one more Cubs game. That's my son. And he said, what are you doing now? Just going to go get something to eat and go home. And Brett's shirt was one of the obvious shirts. It says Willieville instead of Wrigleyville. Wilson's like, where'd you get that shirt? Brett's like, my dad got it for me from the store. So he said, well, you guys are going to dinner. You want? Can I go with? Yeah. So we go to this place called Mimas Taste of Cuba on Irving Park. And it's awesome. And all the Latin ball players, Sox and Cubs, go eat there. So we meet him over there. We stop at the store. Brett's like, can we buy that shirt for Wilson? Buy him a uh, Willieville shirt. Brett gives it to him. We are getting ready to eat dinner outside, and there's a seat next to Wilson. Brett starts walking over. Brett, his wife's going to sit there, buddy. He's like, "Uh uh-uh, that's Brett's seat. So this dude has been that guy to my son. So it's really hard for me when – he makes these comments about being with the Cardinals. I was texting with him the other day. He's like, are people going to boo me up there? I'm like, yeah, probably. Yeah, probably. Dude. I, I, look, I've got yeah, it. I kind of think that you should now block Eddie for calling your friend Wilson Contreras 
brain dead. So I, I think already, that, I you should did. just block him on Twitter. I already did. <laughs> okay, good. Listen, block. listen. So I'm hoping they either go to St. Louis or when they come up here and sit down with Wilson. And I want to ask him on camera and put it on my YouTube. Wilson, did you really think that was a smart thing to fire on Cubs fans? You were here for eight years and they freaking love you. No, and, and Cap, listen, after that story – I think you have a right, and people would never, ever be mad at you again if you ever, if you never criticized Wilson Contreras because that is pretty unbelievable what he did for your son. But unbelievable, unbelievable. But we talked about it on the show before. It's like a city where you know eighty-five bears are still cashing checks at you know local dealerships. That guy, no matter what happens in the rest of his career, he could come here and go to a Barnes and Noble. Probably won't be around then, and he could be, He'd be you know doing ink and law commercial. Exactly, like dude, yeah. yeah. Forever, but to say that, like, very ill-advised, very ill-advised. He, I could tell you he's hurt because he wanted to stay here. It wasn't like, well, I can't wait to get the free agency to get out of there. He wanted to be – he still wants to be here. Mm-hmm. And for whatever reason, they decided we're moving on. Wilson's, Wilson's not everyone's cup of tea because he's intense and – you know, remember Clint Hurdle when he was managing the Pirates? He hated Wilson and mm-hmm. Javi. Okay, it's not for everybody. Uh, again, I love the dude. I got a person. And we, as I said, it didn't start out well. And he's been amazing. So I want to ask him, on Wilson, why not just say I loved my eight years there. For whatever reason, it didn't work out. I wish them well, except when they play us. I'm on the Cardinals now. That's all you had to say. That's it. That's it. That's so it. that would have been fine. <laughs> well, I know where you're coming from. Yes, exactly. It, it was, I couldn't believe it. I truly couldn't believe it. Um, but besides that, Cap, what what else this year? Like, what are what, what do you find to be the most interesting story? Just kind of this little quick rebuild, but not but like a weird rebuild. What do you think is the most interesting storyline coming in? I think this that Jed, like Jed, hasn't gotten any credit yet. It's always. Well, he was Theo's guy. It was Theo. It was Theo. If Hayden Wisniewski is the guy that he looks like he might be, holy shit. You gave up a pitcher who's now on the injured list with an elbow, F. Ross, who's like a 28-year-old rookie, for a guy who might be in your rotation for the next decade? That'll go down as a hell of a trade. Mm -hmm. I'm not telling you he's going to be Jake Arrieta, but, boy, he looks really solid. And if they... What if I told you that they won 82 games this year, didn't make the postseason, spent more money in the offseason, and next year won the division? You'd be like, boy, Jed, Jed knows what he's doing. Yeah, so, and it feels plausible. And, you know, and if, if our sports book has the over-under at 78 and a half, and you tell me that it's 82, 83, I think everybody is feeling pretty good about that. I already bet it. I bet. The right. <laughs> All right, I like that. Now, Gordon like Whitmire said to me, play the under, play the under. I'm like, you're just negative. I love Gordon, but you're negative. Yeah. I played it. I played the over. All right. I like it. We'll see, man. Like you said, it it's it's been kind of a lull. Is there is there a guy besides Wilson that you is still kind of getting to you that that should be part of this team that you think would fit in nicely uh that the Cubs maybe kind of squandered? Oh, you mean the guys like we traded away? Yeah. Mm-hmm. No. Absolutely. First of all, Javi has not played well since yep. the yep. 2019 season. 2020, he said, oh, there's no energy, the pandemic. Come on, man, you're a pro. Just play. 21, they traded him away. They got their number one prospect for him. That was a great trade, Pete Crow Armstrong. And the Mets rue that trade because they don't even have Javi. Uh, Rizzo, I think Rizzo needed to move on. I think it – I love Anthony. Did a show yeah. with him for almost a decade. Love him. I think he's in the right place. Uh, Chris Bryant, look, he gave me the greatest thrill of my life. He was the MVP of the World Series champions. I also believe, in fact, I know that he was offered a hell of a contract. He kept saying, no, I never got offered a contract, then finally admitted, well, I did get one offer. He's in Colorado. I think they're going to regret the contract they gave him. $182 million? I just don't think this dude wants to play through like the grit test. Yeah. Wonderfully talented, great person. 
I don't know if he wins the grit test. And a nice boy. A very nice boy. Yeah. yeah if your, bro- yeah. your daughter brought him home, you'd be like, oh, what a quality young man. Yeah. Just don't know if he's the guy with man oh man like you get like i'll tell you a quick story so if you think back in 17 he dove into third base in atlanta i believe it was and he bent his finger back and he went he missed like three or four days you remember that Mm -hmm. okay he walks in the dugout or the clubhouse i'm there kelly krull is standing right there and eric kinski the old hitting coach his whole entire body's a tattoo he's an animal he's a great dude He's the grit test. And he walks up to Chris. Cubs have lost three in a row. They're trying to go back to back. And he says, hey, KB, you playing today? No, man, my pinky's still messed up. He airs him the fuck out in the clubhouse. Airs him out. And, I mean, can't believe this dude's not going to play through a pinky. Airs him out and storms away. 15 minutes later, Chris Bryant's in the lineup. Wow. Yeah. Some guys need a kick in the ass, and it it felt like he was kind of one of those guys. So it's just hitting hitting the home run off of uh, Jack Flaherty when we thought his ankle was basically broken. Yeah. They're at different ends of the spectrum. Good people. One does his business one way. One does it another. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's just still, like, always going to be crazy to me that that – 2016 team was just like a, it was a shooting star like he kind of felt like we were gonna have a great five-year run with those guys and it just never never really came to fruition it was it glad they got the one but it felt like it does feel like they they that group underachieved in a way even but though they, they did go to three down. straight nlcs yeah, yeah. no mm-hmm. that's true they, they did yeah. they did exactly we'll end on this cap what three things need to happen for the Cubs to shock a lot of people and win this division? Three things have to happen. Uh, well, they've got to have health in their rotation. I don't think, like most teams, I don't know how much depth they have. You know, Drew Smiley, is Hendricks coming back healthy? I love Kyle. I, I just don't know. Shoulders don't usually respond in your 30s. Like elbows get fixed in your back. So they got to have health in their rotation. That's one. Two, Cody Bellinger has got to be Cody Bellinger. And then say a Suzuki has to be say a Suzuki. Because if Eric Hosmer, you get your pain in the league minimum. You took a flyer. If that doesn't work or Trey Mancini doesn't work, Matt Mervis is coming up, and I love this dude. But if Saya is Saya and Cody rebounds, and all of a sudden you're like, wow, the pitching stayed healthy? Could be a fun summer. We could be. I'll hang with you guys in the bleachers. I don't work for NBC anymore. I got afternoons free. Let's go. Well, I was going to ask you that too. Like, are you enjoying this uh, post NBC life? Because it seems like you are. Oh fuck yeah! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I loved my time there. I did. Yeah. But like, I was handicapping games for tonight. I'm putting a same game together for the Bulls game. I'll watch that on the couch with my dogs and have a few drinks, and then I do my recap on my YouTube channel. And what's the complaint about, man? I'm as busy as I've ever been. You know, doing all my YouTube stuff keeps me super busy, but it's not work. Like, I do content every day, and I had someone say, dude, you were in Jamaica on vacation with your wife for a week, and you did your Bulls recaps from from Jamaica. My wife is all in. She gets it. She loves sports. And so... Is that work to watch the Bulls game while I'm having a cocktail in Jamaica? You're, you're not no. mine and Cole. Yeah. I'm not mine. I'm playing at Disneyland. Yeah. Cap, oh. I believe you, but I still remember when you said on the radio one time that if you hit the lottery, you would still wake up and do both of those jobs and every, live everything like before. I think that's crazy. <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> I, I'll be honest with you. I have not worked a regular job. God, it's got to be 35 years. I get up in the morning, I go talk sports on ESPN 1000, I go work out from there, I come home and eat lunch, then I do my recap afternoon sportscast, the rush hour, then I'm going to watch the Bulls game and have cocktails, 
I'm going to get up tomorrow and do our show from the Wrigleyville area at Old Crow Smokehouse, go work out, go home, and sit on the couch and have cocktails and watch the Cubs play. <laughs> Come on. That is not work. It just takes a commitment. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> I hear you, Cap. Well, thank you, Cap. Thanks for jumping on and talking some Cubs. What's Where could people find the recap and everything like that? They can just go on YouTube and just put in my name and R E K A P and I recap every every Cubs, Sox, Bulls, Bears, and Monday through Friday I do an afternoon sports cast. So I'm all over all of it and it's a lot of fun. Awesome, Cap. Thanks, man. We appreciate it. Yeah, let's do it in studio sometime. I'll come join you guys. We love we'll that. Yeah, we'd love to have you in. Let's help me in. I will go to dinner. We'll go to Chicago Cut. Awesome. All right. We're we'll in, see Cap. Dave Flom. We love that guy. <laughs> He's the best. He is the best. He is the best. Thanks, All right, Cap. You guys have a great night. Thanks for having me. Appreciate All it. All right. Thanks, Cap. All right. Boom. That was Cap. Chief, how do you feel? Do you feel better or worse after listening to Cap talk about the Cubs? Hard, hard to feel worse. <laughs> I mean, the guy, the guy is so jacked up. He's optimistic. I am kind of, you know, like I've been trying to read it and, and watch a little spring training. It does feel a lot different. Like it just. There's something about like those teams that like put the ball in play, they play clean defense, and you know they're they're kind of have good guys, and it just seems like this is a, a new era. It's gonna. I, I'm looking forward to baseball season for the first time in I don't know three years. So I'm excited for this Cubs team. Yeah, it's impossible to be super negative with Cap's energy and kind of going into yeah. some of the things he said. You know, obviously some of the hopeful things that need to happen for them to win the division. I think they got the work cut out for them, obviously. Yeah, but I don't think it's impossible though. Like you, it, you would need like everything to go your way, but it's not like yeah. there. I'd rather be the Cubs than the Reds, you know. Sure, like, or the Pirates. Yeah. yeah, I get it. But yeah, the Cardinals and the Brewers are just better. Yeah. Um, but we'll, we'll see. Uh, thanks again to Cap coming on. Uh, obviously, Giolito, Lynn, uh, quite the loaded show for everybody. So that's it. Happy opening day. Hope you guys enjoy it. And Hope springs um, eternal, baby. Let's have a good day. Exactly. Everyone have a good day and. Uh, Make sure you check out that White Sox Dave Challenge. It's very funny. We uh, recorded it in between interviews and whatnot. So uh, tune yeah. into that on our YouTube page. And uh, that's it, everybody. Thank you for uh, tuning in. We will see you guys on Tuesday for the live show.